A new report reveals how the Princess of Wales spends her days, and it is totally disconnected from reality. I have never taken a Valium, but maybe today is the day to begin. The reason for my almost crippling anger, my frustration, my annoyance, and my urge to scream under my blanket is Kate, the Princess of Wales and a new UK report that has emerged praising the many glorious aspects of the future Queen. Hello and a very warm welcome to British Royal Daily Update's YouTube channel. It is that time of the year when the royal family has moved north, very far north, to Balmoral for their yearly group vacation, the highest temperature on Wednesday was 18 degrees, leaving behind a void of news shaped like Buckingham Palace. Therefore, a piece from The Telegraph has appeared with the title, The Moment That Kate Became a True Queen in Waiting, all about what an excellent, first-class, outstanding job Kate is doing, almost a year after she was promoted to her princess role. Where things get tricky is that one of her friends decided to give associate editor Gordon Rayner the scoop on how the 41-year-old manages to balance three kids, a dog and supporting a husband who she keeps finding hunched over sadly counting the hairs that showed up in the bathroom sink. Well, I'm assuming anyway. According to The Telegraph, Kate has developed her own system to ensure each part of her life gets the attention it deserves. The anonymous friend, who I think we can presume would not have talked to a journalist without the princess's consent, said, she has created a life plan based on splitting her time into thirds. A third of her time is for parenting, a third is for being a wife, spending time with her husband and supporting him, and a third is for her projects and royal duties. Now, given how this is presented, clearly the mystery buddy thinks that this reflects wonderfully on the Princess of Wales, a proof of her superwoman status. Somehow, Kate is managing to handle children, wearing a tiara and finding the time to gently stroke William's hand as he practices his scalp massage. But seriously, what in the name of Phyllis Schlafly hell is this? For one thing, what other supposed full-time working person in the world can get away with spending only one-third of their time on actually doing their job? The 41-year-old is going to be the Queen of Great Britain and Northern Ireland one day, she's not some regional sales manager's part-time PA. Kate may be doing commendable things, especially her early years initiative that includes launching the Royal Foundation Centre for Early Childhood, forming a business task force, and writing an opinion piece for the Financial Times, but it seems like she could do more. Let's do some calculations here. If we assume that the princess is awake for 16 hours a day, she appears to be the type who sleeps for a solid 8 hours with a silk eye mask, that means that she is working for just over 5 hours per day on average. If we assume that she works from Monday to Friday, that means that she is putting in only 25 hours of royal duty a week. And this is now that she and William have taken on full-time royal roles after switching from part-time in 2017. Really? Is this enough? So far this year, Kate has done 85 official events compared to Queen Camilla's 118 at the age of 75. Of course, we have to take into account that the princess has young children and Kensington Palace sources always seem to emphasize how involved they are as parents. The Waleses deserve a lot of praise for not delegating all of the messy aspects of parenting, such as the peanut butter stains, the book week outfits, and the nocturnal vomiting, to a staff of uniformed helpers. But still, Kate is destined for a role unlike any other and one that will make her a subject of historical writing for centuries to come. The Princess of Wales has a truly legendary title and the expectations of what that entails, or should entail, in the 21st century are enormous. Does this sound like the kind of job you can really ace in only 33% of your week? Furthermore, if this friend's story was supposed to make her look like a relatable and admirable person, then they need to get a clue, this doesn't make Kate look like an ordinary mum but a pampered, rich woman who has no clue about how hard the balance really is. I also have a huge issue with the idea of Kate spending one-third of her life on being a wife. Is she really devoting an equal amount of her life to being a spouse, like some frightening 50s relic, as to her work? This sounds like something from a post-war newspaper's women's section advice column, along with six amazing ways with powdered eggs and the best places to get a corset. Being a loving, supportive partner is fine and all, but setting aside time to stand by her man makes her look like a Tammy Wynette song brought to sad reality. 
This version of Kate seems remarkably disconnected from the contemporary world. And let's also take a moment to acknowledge that no one is eagerly proclaiming that William is also dedicating a third of his life to being a spouse. Look, overall, I believe Kate has made tremendous progress from the timid, uncertain woman she was when she first joined the royal family. I believe the princess is creating a lasting legacy and doing significant, worthwhile work for the UK. I believe the Princess of Wales has the capacity to be an exceptional figure and queen. But balancing parenting and having a relationship while working part-time is not some amazing accomplishment that warrants effusive praise. Royalty is supposed to be a role model for us, the common people. The only example that Kate is really giving right now is how splendid it is to marry a very rich guy who can pay for you to not work and to have plenty of staff. Phyllis would be very impressed. New clues have emerged about the Duchess of Sussex's next big move, and it could put her at odds with the palace. It's on the way. Nobody knows the details, but one day soon, you and I and King Charles will be surprised by the great reboot of Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. You can call it the second coming of Brand Sussex or the Magnaissance or a clever last-minute image makeover, but the royal family's most controversial newcomer since they brought in Caroline of Brunswick is about to do something big. Is it a website, a blog, a social media platform, an e-commerce site, an Oprah-like place for self-help and pop psychology? Nobody knows, but as time runs out until the big moment when Meghan's alleged business venture is finally unveiled with all the fanfare, hype, and exaggerated press releases full of capitalized nouns you would expect, could this be the start of a new clash with Buckingham Palace? Let me tell you more. It has been a very odd year for the Duchess of Caramel Coats. First, she mostly vanished, staying out of sight as her husband Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex soared to the top of the bestseller charts, and to the bottom of Queen Camilla's Christmas list, with spare. But even after that storm of unresolved daddy issues had passed, she mostly stayed hidden, only appearing to be snapped by photographers. The turning point came in April when she, and only she, hired Hollywood super agent Ari Emanuel to help her revive her career. After all, her podcasting attempt had not really taken off with archetypes only lasting one season, her kids' show had been cancelled by Netflix in a huge budget cut and her star had faded. As the year went on, so did the rumors that part of what Meghan had been working on was some kind of comeback to the online world, having previously, before becoming a royal, created her own niche, the TIG, in the bland women's blogging world. Rumors of a comeback similar to her former blog The TIG have been increasing this month. This week, a source told Page Six that Meghan and her team are putting in a lot of effort. They said, I think it will be surprising, it won't be what everybody is expecting it to be, it will feel familiar to who Meghan is. Another person who is close to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex also revealed to Page Six earlier this month that Meghan wants to emulate a bit of Reese Witherspoon, a bit of Gwyneth Paltrow, founder of Goop. In other words, a very successful entrepreneur. Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine was bought for $1.4 billion and Paltrow's Goop is worth nearly $400 million. The problem arises when we think about how a royal doing business would be perceived and how the palace would respond.